Welcome back to our video series. In the previous video we computed a geological model. Now let's take a closer look at it. Literally. In this video we will explore the 2D visualization options provided by Gempy. Since Gempy version 3 the project has been split into different packages for better organization and modularity. Visualization tools are now included in the Gempy viewer package and 2D plotting is built on Matplotlib. Let's see how it works. We will start with the basics, calling gpv.plot2d and the name of our model, GeoModel, creates a default cross-section through the model in the y-direction, slicing it right down the middle. If the model has already been computed, you will see the results. If not, the plot will show only the input data. From here we can customize things further. For instance, we can change the direction of the cross-section by setting the direction argument to x, y or z. The cell number argument lets us choose which slice of the model to display. The resolution of our model is 100 times 40 times 40. So setting the cell number to 20 in the y or z direction will cut right through the center of the model. We can toggle what we actually want to display in our section by using the following arguments. Show data controls the visibility of input data. Show boundaries reveals or hides interfaces between structural elements. Show lith toggles the lithology block model itself. We can even go a step further and visualize the underlying scalar field using show scalar equals two. In the previous video, we computed the scalar fields of our geo model. Each scalar field for each structural group can be displayed separately by changing the series n argument. Setting series n to zero will display the scalar field for the youngest group, while series n equals one shows the field for the older group. Here is a handy trick. If your model spans a large area but has subtle vertical features, you can use the VE argument, short for vertical exaggeration, to stretch the z-axis and make those features easier to see. If this is not sufficient to resolve thin features, you might have to increase the vertical resolution of your model. So far we've been working with simple default sections. But what if we need something more customized, like a diagonal cross section or a section that only covers part of the model? This is where custom sections come in. To create one, we give it a name, define a starting point, an end point, and a resolution using gp.setSectionGrid. Changing the resolution is especially useful if we want to compute a cross section at a higher resolution than the model itself. We can define multiple custom sections in one step. If you want an overview of all custom sections, you can display their traces from a top-down perspective using gpv.plotSectionTraces. After defining the section, we need to recompute the model, as this adds a new grids where the function values must be evaluated. Once that's done, we can visualize the custom sections by passing its name to gpvplot2d. We hope you found this tutorial helpful and have some fun with the 2D visualization options. If so, leave a like on this video or maybe even stop by GitHub and grant Jampi a star rating. Are there any topics you would like us to cover? Make sure to leave a comment. By subscribing, you make sure to miss no informative Jampi videos in the future. See you in the next video.